Gemini, thanks for joining me. This is Gregory Scott and I'm going to give you a rundown of your astrology for October 2015. So I want to just cast your mind to the 30th of September because there's two things that will occur that are going to influence you quite significantly in October. The first one of those is that Pluto starts to square the Sun and it starts doing that on the 30th of September and it continues to do that until the 12th of October. Yes, so half the month, okay, that's going to be quite a significant influence for you. Your sun is um, your personality, your identity, and it's in Libra, which is another air sign like you are, so it feels quite comfortable around this time of the year. Um, and it sits in your fifth house, that connects with Pluto. What you're really going to be focused on over these two weeks is really increasing your relationships in an intimate uh, sexual way <laughs> okay so rather than just say you're going to be experiencing a great lift in your libido at the beginning of this month what that I mean you know without joking aside what that's about it's it's a it's a desire for intimacy okay and it's a desire for understanding someone more like you know, sometimes you're with someone and everything's okay just to keep it light, but sometimes you just want to, you know, lift their head off and climb inside them and understand them and really be completely identified with that other person. It's quite difficult to speak about this without not getting silly about it. It's, you know, it's a natural, it's a natural desire. And I really think at the beginning of this month, you're really, really going to want that one-to-one -one intimate personal connection with another human being. So if you're in a relationship, great. You know, the other person hopefully will be into that as well. I mean, it's, you know, if you want to get closer to someone, why not? If you're single, just be aware that there's going to be an increased need to be understood to be connected um, and if you're single don't isolate yourself and um, you know by don't go sleeping with strangers you know that's not going to help because there's no intimacy there that's not understanding but speak to people about your feelings about who you are about what your dreams and hopes are and get into intimacy that way it doesn't just need to be a physical thing now the other thing that happens is that Pluto starts to square Uranus um, and that actually is going to continue for nine months. So from the 30th of September through until the 13th of May 2016. Now Uranus is in Aries in the 11th house, your hopes and dreams. Um, and Pluto is in that 8th house of intimate, you know, personal relationships and depth. So the dream of being with someone who really, really understands you. The dream of having that pure, true relationship will be with you for the next nine months. This, for me personally, when I kind of say this and when I look at things, I just think, oh, you know, that's annoying. Because when you're a t child, when you're a teenager, often, I mean, some people aren't highly romantic, but some people really are. And you have the dream of what a relationship can be. The person understands everything about me. I'm super attracted to them physically. The way we speak, we're completely on the same wavelength. Everything's going to be magical, prince charming, princess not Fiona, uh, you know, another one. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's that, that, that almost childlike belief that another person can completely fulfill you and you complete me, you know, all of that stuff. It's, it's a little bit unreasonable in terms of if you set yourself up to have that and you don't get it, you know, it, it can be a disappointment, it can, it can set you up for failure. And this kind of um, desire to have that true love, that perfection, will be with you. So, don't get me wrong, I do believe in true love, I do believe that people can connect, but I don't believe that it's, it's perfection, okay? I don't think it can ever be perfect. You'll argue, the way they wash the dishes will get on your nerves, whatever. There's always something, okay? So don't go into fantasy mode where you're like, oh, this is perfection. Look for a partner who really understands you, who you can be intimate with, who you can connect with, all of those things, without going over the top about it. You know, he does not have to have a white horse and be blonde and six foot four. You know, he can have um, ash blonde hair and a black horse and be six foot two. That's fine too. Okay, so 
it's not about compromising, but it's about coming back down to planet Earth. So those things, that for the next nine months is really going to be part of your reality and there's that sense of longing for my hopes and dreams want to be realized. Okay, on the 1st of October, there's a lot of Earth going on in the chart and um, most of that happens in your fourth house of family. So you're going to be very oriented at making that work and you're going to be very much uh, focused on your relationships again in terms of what's really real. So Gemini, there's not a lot of partying going on at the beginning of Gemini, at the beginning of October. I really don't think you're going to be interested in superficial stuff. I think you're really going to be longing for what's real in my life and you're going to be asking yourself that question. On the third, Chiron starts to square the moon. And Chiron is in your 10th house. The moon is in your sign, Gemini, in um, the first house. So what I really feel is that um, the way you see yourself, ideas that you have about yourself, self-belief, can really fix something in your working life that's been a disappointment. If you're in the wrong job, I think you might realize around the third that, hey, I can do better than this. Um, if there is a situation that has gone awry at work, you can talk it out. If you were rude to a co-worker or there was a misunderstanding, the third is a good way to resolve that. It's about being clear on who you are, having personal understanding, self-awareness, and using that to make changes in the real world, positive changes. The Sun, Mercury and the North Node are in your fifth house of romance and relationship and they start to square the Moon on the 4th of October. The Moon has moved into Cancer. You've become much more caring and nurturing about people, feelings in a practical sense and that connects with your um, identity and the way you communicate. So the third and the fourth, it's not just that you know who you are and what you're saying, but you're doing that with compassion and you are considerate of other people and their feelings, which is always a plus and which will always work in your favor. favor. On the fifth, there's a T-square and that's between Pluto and the Moon and it is resolved with Uranus in your 11th house again. So, um, have a think about what it is you really want in your life. Do you want relationships or do you want um, money? Pick which one's more important to you. You'll have a choice to make on the fifth. Someone will either invite you out to do something where you can build a relationship or you can do work or count your money or pay your bills or whatever. It, it's really an important choice to realize a hope and dream and the choice you make on this day is going to have an impact on you later on. So choose wisely on the 5th. And I don't think that's ominous, it's just an important day for you that could go either way. Pluto starts to trine the Midheaven, Jupiter and Mars on the 6th of October. And um, this is another really good day, a kind of a repetition of um, the solidity in your emotional self, your connection with other people, the way you relate to other people, and the way you interact. There's also a real desire to take existing relationships and to move them along, to, to help them grow in some way. So you're very oriented on, it's interesting, you're very into the depth of what you have with another human being and how to improve that. So you're very, very practical and constructive. And that's great because it means your, your relationships are going to naturally progress and grow. On the 7th, the Moon starts to trine Uranus. And this is nice because the Moon is now in Leo in your third house and you're communicating very, very well. And this, again, gives rise and gives new energy into achieving um, improved relationships and also realizing your hopes and dreams. So this is a wonderful day to put yourself in the spotlight and to go out with friends and to do something that usually you might find daunting or anything like that. You'll feel very confident and you'll be able to get into the spirit of things, be enthusiastic and have a wonderful day out. On the 9th, Venus moves into Virgo from Leo. Venus going into Virgo is good for you because Virgo is the other sign that shares your ruler. Your ruler is Mercury and 
Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Venus is the goddess of love, and when that goes into that sign, you can kind of identify with it, and what you love is um, talking to people, uh, figuring out what works and what doesn't, and you're really kind of like a, you're going to be able to, I mean, on the negative side, almost wrap people around your finger, but you'll have an innate kind of radar about other people, and you'll really pick up on their feelings and what they're doing and how they really think and feel. So anything where you're influencing people, like a sales job or something like that, you're going to be on fire this month if you're working in kind of um, an information industry where you have to pitch the information to a certain demographic or express yourself in a way that people will respond to it well if you're trying to make a viral video, you know, to make it really kind of up-to-date. The 9th of October is great because you have an innate un understanding of what other people respond to. Mercury comes out of retrograde on this day as well, which is going to benefit you hugely. If you don't know what Mercury retrograde is, have a look at the video I did on that. It happens a couple of times a year and it makes communication more stifled. And because it's your ruler, in particularly, in particular, I should say, rather, you're particularly influenced by that, and you're going to feel the ninth today as a big sigh of relief because communication gets much easier. So, the, the information that you get from people throughout this month is partially because Mercury has been in retrograde, because rather than just listen, you're using all your other senses at the beginning of October. You're using your your intuition, your you know your spider sense, your everything. You're just kind of really tuning into people on all levels because the main communicative channel has been um, blocked by that Mercury. You've had to resort to things, and that's why you're getting more information. You know, it's like someone who loses their vision; their hearing becomes much better. It's not because the, their ears change in any way, but because the intention is there, and you compensate, and the body adapts. On the um, 10th of October, Venus forms a relationship with Neptune in a sesky square, and that stays there until the 14th. So over the next four days, you will really notice that you can transfer some of the things you love about people and what you've discovered about people in October so far, you can transfer that into your work. This is a really good time for you to become self-employed in some sort of healing industry if you're in interested in that and to really understand how you, specifically as an individual, can help people and how you can do service through your career. So if you've been wanting to make that shift, really, really pay attention over these four days. You'll get great insights. There's a T-square that happens between the Sun and Uranus on the 11th of October, and the culmination to that problem, the motivation here, is Pluto in your 8th house. You'll have a decision to make. Friends, romance, people, how do I build those relationships? How do I work on them? And you'll have to choose whether you, um, it might even be, is this friend going to become a, a romantic partner or not? And that's a, that's a tricky one. That's a tough one. But think about how you would like it to end up. So if you've, you know, if you've been friends with um, someone for a year um, and it's always just been a friendship and you'd like to progress it to the next level, be honest with yourself. You know, those things can work sometimes. You know, I think it's 50-50 pretty much. Those things can work and don't let the work of it and the risk of it put you off and choose truthfully. And kind of put yourself on the line a little bit because there's a real opportunity to make that into something profound and long-lasting and really enriching in your personal life. On the 13th, the new moon happens in Libra. And again, that's in your fifth house of romance and relationship. Libra is a sign of harmony and relating to people. And this new moon for you is all about and pouring energy into what you want to achieve in your relationship life. But it's not so intense as it was at the beginning of the month, which was all about really, I, I, I need to just, you know, be this close to you. Um, this is more about 
having a more realistic balanced relationship and I think you might even get a bit of a backlash from the intensity that you had at the beginning of the month it, it, it's, it's, it's interesting because there's a couple of contradictions here at the beginning of the month I'm telling you that you're gonna feel a little bit super intense okay then around the 13th I'm telling you that you may have a tendency to want to make one of your friends a more intimate partner I don't think that's your your intensity, your heightened libido that's wanting to do that. I think that's just a curveball you're being thrown by the universe, and I think that's genuine. Then the day after, on the 13th, the new moon occurs, and it's all about how do I have relationships that are long-term and lasting in my life. So everything's about relationship, but it's kind of like you're trying to figure out how to make it work in a way that is helpful to you. And I really feel that even though it sounds contradictory, that taking an existing relationship and deepening it would be something that would create more harmony in your life. Okay, long story short there. So, 16th of August to the 13th of August as well, Jupiter has been in opposition to Neptune. And you start to feel a little bit less... Um, That, that super sense in terms of other people, you know, the, the, the deeper understanding, that kind of leaves you on the 13th of October and you start to operate in a more normal level. So if you're trying to find out about people, if you're trying to influence people, if you're trying to um, do any of those things, before the 13th of October is your best bet. The moon starts to trine Uranus on the 17th of October. And... You can expect a relationship to move forward now. Something happens for you where one of your hopes and dreams is realized and you see a future. And the two of you move forward and you get that stability that you've been longing for and looking for. On the 18th, the moon starts to square your north node and your midheaven in your fifth house. and your Mercury, really, and um, that gets even more solidified for you and you are able to communicate what you want and what your needs are. So the 17th of 18th, really, look out for what's going on in your life because that person is going to be important and there's a real potential future with that person who's in your life around that time. On the 19th and 20th, the Moon and Pluto conjunct the moon is what makes you feel nurtured and what makes you feel comfortable. And Pluto is the phoenix rising from the ashes. Okay, So the, the, the influences are kind of repeating themselves now. But that relationship that you never thought would happen, that would never become a reality, has kind of come to life now. And it starts to be um, overseen by the lucky and good positive influence of Jupiter and there can be real love there. So it's a bit of a mess at the beginning of the month. You have to kind of, it's like a bowl of spaghetti. You have to kind of pull things out to make sense of them. So through all of that chaos, look at where your true feelings lie and who your true feelings lie with. And then take a risk and commit to making that something more concrete. Because out of all of that chaos, you're going to end up with something really streamlined and someone who you can really relate to and fall in love with. On the 23rd, Neptune starts to try in your sun, and that connection lasts until the 6th of November. When Neptune connects with the sun, you become more psychic. So this is kind of a good time because it's the build-up to Halloween, but you'll notice that you'll have more access to messages from the other side. We've got a siren there. So I always, during my readings, things like that I take as important. And we've got a siren going on, so it may feel alarming, okay? It may feel scary for you, Gemini, to get these extra messages in. But just always realize that you're safe and that the messages you're getting through are there for a reason. The moon starts to uh, try the ascendant on the 25th, and you feel very much like yourself and you feel very certain of your own path and of your own direction in life. So, um, 
this is a good day to sign any contracts, to sign agreement, to sign up for a new course. You know what you're doing and you can trust yourself. The full moon happens on the 27th and the full moon is in Taurus in your 12th house. So some sort of practical manifestation of your spiritual self. Might even be that one of your guides materializes and you see them for the first time or that you get a real clear audience message that you're actually here. Something that becomes very, very practical or that you have um, a much greater sense of your spiritual connection or that you discover God for the first time or what your concept of God is. The full moon is always a blossoming, a culmination and it sits really in a very, very spiritual place here in your chart and it means that you have more grounding and more of a a deeper, firmer understanding of your own spirituality and your own faith in your life. Grand Trine in Earth occurs on the 28th of October. And this again is between, it focuses on your relationships and it's underpinned by this understanding of people that you have. That's really this month for you, Gemini, this deeper understanding of other people and really what your relationships mean. And I don't know if I can explain it any better than what I've tried to so far. But sometimes we have people in our lives and it just seems random. You know, it isn't random. You have people in your life for a reason. They either teach you something or they help you release something. Or they help you connect with love or spirit or something like that. But you start to see, you start to be able to read between the lines of your relationships and understand why you've got them. Another grand trine happens on Halloween on the 31st of October, and that's in water. So water is the sign of the intuition and psychic ability. That's already heightened anyway with that Sun-Neptune connection. With this grand trine in water though, it makes it even stronger, and you can really expect some great um, insights, some great messages to come through for you on this Halloween. If you treat Halloween as a joke, then that's fine. If you don't take it seriously, great, have a good time. But if you do like connect or if you do um, have you know practice any spiritual things on that day in all seriousness, or if you're a ghost hunter or something like that, go go out on this day. You'll really experience more than you usually would. It's a good year for you for it. So I hope you found that useful. If you'd like a private reading with me, then please get in touch via my website. It's gregorysgott.com. And if you um, Want to find me on Facebook? I'm there as well. Facebook.com forward slash Gregory Scott 444. And you can also um, send me an email. The address is readings at gregoryscott.co.uk. So please remember to subscribe to the channel, and I'll speak to you soon.